thanks for clicking on this video. Pretty serious topic today because I know we always sort of make light uh, here when we're uh, videoing stuff and we're wearing thongs or things like that around, uh, yeah, that we say safety third, but safety should always be your number one priority when you're working on cars, especially when there's things that can really actually kill you. So not just injure your eyes or your feet or whatever, something like that, something that can kill you. And one thing that's a complete silent killer is carbon monoxide. So what I've got here is a carbon monoxide alarm and it's something that you should have in your car garage if you're gonna work on cars. And the reason for that is carbon monoxide gas is colorless, odorless, tasteless, so you won't know that it's in the air, but if it's in too great a concentration, it can kill you within minutes. So let's just take a look at this product and what it can do. So you can see here the effects of CO. CO is uh, carbon monoxide, C uh, carbon and one oxygen is uh, carbon monoxide. Uh, PPM is parts per million of, of the amount of carbon monoxide in the air, and you can see 100 parts per million, slight headache, a bit of nausea, 200 parts per million, dizziness and headache after a couple of hours, 400, you start getting drowsy, a bit confused, don't really know what's going on, risk to your life after three hours, 800 parts per million, severe headaches, convulsions, organ failure, and death possible in two to three hours. So this is... This is very serious sort of stuff here, and you'll see here, common sources of carbon monoxide. Car left running uh, in attached garage. So you've probably heard the one about, um, you know, gas um, heaters and that, and I, I, there's been some pretty tragic stories over the years of people have, you know, left a heater on inside that's never been serviced, and their gas heater um, produces carbon monoxide, and, you know, basically the family dies through, you know, carbon monoxide poisoning, but cars are another, um, yeah, ones with non-functioning um, uh, con cat converters and stuff like that can definitely produce carbon monoxide or cars that aren't, you know, tuned up correctly in that. So, uh, yeah, why I'm going to run this ad in the garage is, is pretty simple. It's because uh, if you're going to run a car in the garage, obviously make it sure it's very, very well ventilated. But in lieu of having even that ventilation, uh, this will tell me exactly on this screen what the CO concentration is in parts per million, and it will also alarm very loudly if it gets into a danger zone. So um, this is, these are about, I think this is $59 from Bunnings. So you think, what's your life worth? Suffocating and dying on the floor in your garage, or $59 from um, you not knowing something that you can't see, taste, or, or smell. So uh, let's pull it out of the packets and see how it works. And yeah, see if we can't put it on the exhaust and maybe the F truck that's out here and see if we can't register something. All right, so it's got a, some little information here. It's got 10 years replace after installation because it has a lithium battery. It's sealed in here, so it's always on. So you don't have to worry about your 9 volt battery going flat and changing it like a you normally do with smoke alarms so that's great because uh yeah i mean the one time it might save your life if the battery was dead that's um not going to work out well for you so now it says here all you have to do is sort of slide this on um and wow that's going to happen which is a bloody loud beep i think that's what it says here to test the alarm press the test button the arm will beep once followed by four loud pulses and then a brief pause okay Batten down the hatches, here it goes. And I think that means we are good to go. So it says here, check that the green LED flashes at 30 second intervals to show that the alarm is power. Um, so, I assume we'll just wait for, you wait 30 seconds and, and then that one um, flashes. So it also comes with little, um, you know, spaghetti and, and the wall plugs there to, if you want to permanently mount on the wall, uh, I've probably got to look for a location for this to mount it in where it's going to be loud enough and bang, there it goes. It, uh, there was the little uh, LED flash. So we know that that is working. So, all right, let's, um, let's actually try and see if we can register some numbers here with the uh, F350 outside. Right, so I've got the old uh, VF here running. Getting a bit of plume of nonsense coming out the back there, but this car's warm, so it means the catalytic converter is also warm. Uh, so hopefully there shouldn't be really any um, CO 
emission sort of coming out of the back of this thing. So if we have a look down here, as per the install instructions, it says it should be two meters from fuel burning appliances or whatever. So, you know, it's about two meters. And um, as you can see here, it's reading zero, which is, uh, which is good. I've got no doubt, however, uh, an old truck like this with no catalytic converter uh, would be a different story, but um, uh, it doesn't want to run today. So I uh, can't be bothered getting the jump starter and starting up just for this video and that. But this is, this is basically something, um, yeah, you should have in your home garage because, um, you know, as you can see, sort of when it'll alarm, it's also, by the way, if you're going to put it next to an exhaust and expect it to react straight away, it's not some kind of U-Butte um, data logger ECU where it updates at a thousand hertz. This thing takes a while to react and change. So even if you get a number of um, up on here, that might say, say 50, because you put it right next to the exhaust. Walk um, away from whatever's creating that carbon monoxide, it'll still show the number for a fair while. Um, you know, I think it takes around at least a minute or so um, of being in free air away from a, 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 you know, a, a carbon monoxide emitting source for it to go back to being zero. So don't think that it's broken or anything or that you've put it next to something with CO emitting and it's taking forever to read. It's not an instantaneous thing. It, it, it slowly, slowly, slowly reads. And because carbon monoxide poisoning doesn't happen in sort of, you know, a 10, 20, 30 seconds, it happens over a couple of minutes or whatever. So um, I think you'll find here, like what it says in, in the book, basically that, whoop, in here, uh, it says there that it has to alarm. If it's over 300 parts per million, it'll alarm within three minutes. So I think the sample rate must be around, I don't know, I can't, re it doesn't say what it is in here, but I assume it must be every sort of 20 seconds or something. It takes a sample of, you know, what it was to what it is now and that. So, but yeah, I mean, three minutes in alarming, it's gonna give you a, a fair warning to get the hell out of there and, and ventilate wherever you're doing. But um, yeah, that's pretty much, the alarm and uh, something that you should have that could save your life. This is a bit of a serious one for today, uh, but yeah, hopefully it could be one that potentially might save your life. So yeah, if I would recommend this weekend, go out to your local hardware store or whatever, get a carbon monoxide monitor. There's lots of ones that look like just your normal smoke alarms. I like this one because it has got the actual display on there. So, um, you know, you can just look at when a, if a car is running, even if the alarm's not going, if you see there is some CO in the air, you know that maybe your exhaust system's not working properly either the way it should. So it might give you a bit of a, a pre-warning that something's not quite right there. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, plenty of other tech videos here and coming in the future too. So if you like that type of stuff, subscribe it. Don't forget to share the stuff with your friends because uh, yeah, you gotta get the message out there that safety does really come first. It's not third like we always joke about. So. Make sure they're all safe. Make sure your family and friends are safe when they're working on cars. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.